Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, let's have a look at the um, some indices questions. So the first one here, evaluate x to the power of a half plus x to the power of minus a half over x to the power of a half. Okay, um, when you've got indices questions, you are focusing on this area here of the log tables, page 21. And all of the rules of indices are given here. They actually mean not a lot until you've practiced them and gone through a few questions on them. So what I'm trying to do with the questions in this section is to provide ways to allow us to practice all of the different rules. OK, um, so that's what we're going to do. So you can see the first line, the top line here is um, x to the power plus x to a power. OK, but it's really the x, the plus sign I'm focusing on. And if I look at my rules here, I don't see anything on the left here that's two terms added together. OK, so there isn't a whole pile I can do there with the top. OK, so that's why I've had this hint here to say split the fractions. OK, so what what you can do is write it as x over half over x over half plus x to the power of minus a half over x to the power of a half. Okay, um, and you can do that with any fraction. So two plus three over five is two fifths plus three fifths. Okay, um, I'm not doing something magical here. I'm literally just rewriting it um, differently as in splitting it over its own fraction. Anything over itself, as you can see in this first part here, anything over itself is one. 10 over 10 is 1. 3 over 3 is 1. Well, x to the power of a half over x to the power of a half would also be 1. OK, so that's where 1 comes from there. Plus, right, let's have a look at the at the second bit. So I have um, a base number to a power divided by a base number to a power. So x is what we call the base number here. And this is, is our power. OK, so Back to the rules of logs, because I know that rule two here is a division one. And you can see that the base number must be the same in the log tables. They call the base number A. And then you have A to the power of P divided by A to the power of Q. So it's telling you that to simplify that, you subtract the powers. It's top minus the bottom, top minus the bottom. OK, so what does that mean for my one here? Well. The base number stays the same. It's x in my case, and it's the top minus the bottom. OK, so let's resolve that. So into your calculator, go minus a half, minus a half, and, and see what you get. So minus a half, minus a half, and you'll see you get minus 1. OK. Let's go back to our log tables just so we can use loads of practice of logs. So it's x to the minus one, okay? So you can see it looks something like this one. So what it's telling me is it becomes one over the positive version. So do you see this is a to the power of minus p? When it goes under the line, it's a to the power of p. So when my x to the minus 1 goes under the line, it becomes x to the power of 1, which is just x. So that is 1 over x. And that was a perfectly acceptable answer for this one. Another acceptable answer was that you got a common denominator. And you wrote it like that, OK? So it could have been either of them is a perfectly acceptable answer. 1 plus 1 over x or x plus 1 over x. Let's try another one. So in this one, I was dividing two indices. Let's try this one where we have bracket, bracket by bracket, bracket. OK, nothing 
major different in how you approach it. It still is x by everything in my second bracket minus x to the power of minus a half by everything in my second bracket. So you can see in that sense, I, I'm not doing anything, I'm not really doing anything different. Um, now let's try multiplying them out. So x by x, x squared, okay, x by x to the power of a half, okay. So I'm just going to write it up here for yourselves, okay. Um, that's x by x to the power of a half. So again, just to show you the rules of indices, this is this top one here. This is how it presents itself. So you can see the base number is the same, a, and you have the base number to a power, the same base number to a power, okay? And it tells you to add the powers. So how do I, how do I apply that here? Well, x is x to the power of one. So you can see my base number is the same, it's x and x. And so it's telling me to add the powers. So x to the power of one plus a half, if you put that into the calculator, you'll get x to the power of three over two. Okay, so that's what goes in here. And then we get minus. Well, we have x to the power of a half by x. So you can see it's actually the same as up here, just the numbers are, are the opposite way. So it's again going to be x to the power of three over two. Okay. And then I have x to the power of a half by x to the power of a half. So again, the base numbers is the same. And when you multiply indices, you add the powers. Okay, and you get um, x to the power of a half and a half is one. So he's a plus x. So what happens is they cancel in the middle and your answer is x squared plus x. Okay. Let's have a look at, at this third one. So again, quite like the first one in that it's a fraction, but I've got square root signs. So, so how do I handle square root signs? Well, if we come back here to the rules of indices, this is a very common rule um, in indices. And it's, it's this one here. Let me just have a look at the question. Okay, I'm gonna actually copy the two rules of indices here. I think I need both of them. Okay. So what it's telling me is that um, square root signs can actually be written as powers. Okay. So no matter how complicated the square root sign comes or is, I can write it as a power. So the most common one that comes up is root x. Okay, now what a lot of people don't know about the square root sign is that there's a little two actually written there. We just don't bother putting it in because it's so common. And that's why um, the square root is the opposite of squared, okay? That square cancels with two root. Okay, if I had x cubed and I needed to root that, I would go three root x cubed and that cubed cancels with three root and you'll see three root appears on your calculator um, just behind the square root sign. Okay, but for the purpose of this one, I want to do the square root of x. There's a silent two there. Okay, so what the rule is telling me if I map it onto here is that's what they're calling my a, that's what they're calling my q. Okay. That's my A. And this one here is my Q. Okay, so it's telling me then to put it, my, my A is my base number and it's to the power of one over and my Q is, tw is two. 
So you then end up learning off by heart then that root x is the same as x to the power of a half. So all of these x to the power of a halves that you saw here were actually the square root of x. Okay, so I could write that one then as x to the power of a half and I have an x to the power of a half on the bottom. Now, what is this root x cubed about? Okay, let me rub this one out for now and let's take him down. So I have the square root of x cubed. Okay, and I'm looking at that and I'm wondering, well, which rule are you up here? Are you, well, are you this one? Are you this one? Are you this one? Um, or are you in fact this one? Well, the square root sign without a number always has the two here. Okay, always. So therefore, if I map it to that, because it looks like that, it has a P, it has a Q, and I try and write it like this one. Well, my A is my X, my P is a three, and my Q is a two. So I get A to the power of three over two. Okay, and I shouldn't have put A in because my A is in fact X. X to the power of P over Q is X to the power of three over two in this case. Okay, so they're the harder rules, especially this one. This one you don't see too often at ordinary level um, because it's, it's a hard one to map. But if you remember, you don't have to learn it off by heart. You just need to know how to map it from that onto there. And you need to know that there's a two here. Okay, then you can figure it out once you have your log tables. So just like we did in the first one, then I'm gonna split the fractions. Why? Because there's no rule for, for adding um, terms together. So I'll have x to the power of a half over x to the power of a half. So I'm splitting my fractions here, x to the power of three over two over x to the power of a half. And just like in the first one, that's itself over itself. So that's a one plus, and this one is the division one. So when you have the same base number, two powers, you subtract the indices. So it's x to the power of three over two minus a half. So that's equal to one plus and three over two minus a half is two over two. And of course, two over two is one. So you end up getting one plus x for your answer for that one. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year program that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies, and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.